Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Tiny Robot Love Doctors by Eight Ways Games. This is a one to four player game for ages 14 and up, and it takes roughly about 30 to 45 minutes to play. And in the game Tiny Robot Love Doctors, you're going to be playing as a tiny robot. Yes, that is also a love doctor. And you're going to be attempting to create happiness. There's certain emotions that will fill the board up, as well as monsters. And you're going to have to dispose of them until you get all of the love Love on the board. You'll be getting cards from the game and you'll be playing these cards removing colors from the board based on the required specific spaces outlined on the cards and they will then hopefully go onto your board. And of course if you can fill this entire board up by removing all the unhappy feelings and whatnot you'll win. However with monsters in play they're going to do certain things. You'll have to feed them on the occasion or if you're playing a different game mode you will not be able to move them you have to get rid of them by removing three other other love tiles along with them. Uh, the game is going to end when the deck of cards runs out. Once you have no more cards up in this deck, uh, you're going to basically be taking all your actions until all the cards have been removed. And if this board isn't filled up with complete love tiles, well, the game is over. With varying difficulty and different variants as well for play, you'll see that this game has a lot to offer as a puzzle cooperative style game. Let's talk about the setup, how to play, and my review. To set up the game, the first thing that you'll do is you'll take the main game board and place it within reach of all players. Then you will take all the tokens you're using for this, this game and place it inside this bag. You will then shuffle the bag up and deal out one token to each blank space on the board in front of all players. Take the tiny robot love doctor deck, shuffle up the cards, and then deal out one to each player along with a player card or player mat that is going to have their own unique robot attached to them. Every single player can have a wonderful player reference card and any tokens you're not using can be set aside. After that, the last thing you're going to be doing is choosing a game difficulty level. You might be choosing tough monsters, hungry monsters, hostile monsters, or any other sort of variable you'd like to play as. And then choose a first player, maybe the last player to go to the doctors, I guess, and begin play. Playing the game is very simple. You're going to take out your reference card and do exactly as it says. You can do in any order three abilities. One is you can choose to do a tile swap. Tile swapping is simple. You will choose two adjacent tiles and you will swap their positions. And you can choose any tiles that you would like as long as you're not playing tough monsters because in tough monsters, you cannot move the monsters. Another thing you can do is use a card ability. On your player card, you will have an ability. For instance, here it says tactics. Once per turn, you may swap a card in your hand with the top card of the discard pile. Use your card abilities wisely. They're gonna be very beneficial for you. And the final thing you can do is play any number of cards. Uh, these are the cards you're going to be getting in the game. And when you play them, you have to match them or follow the results. So for instance, this one here is gonna be kind of one of those T-blocks and Tetris. Um, I want to use this by getting rid of the same exact colored tiles. Now, of course, the love tiles are wild, so I can use these in any way that I would like as long as it, con uh, as long as it attaches to another color. Uh, so, for instance, if I want, I can rotate this as well. Now, just like a game like Moonshell, like the, what, my, what my wife made, this is kind of like you can rotate the tile to choose how you want to do it, and then you'll basically be scoring or removing these specific uh, tokens. So, in this case here, I would remove these two red ones here, uh, this green one here, and finally in the middle T position, this other green one. Whenever you remove tile or these tokens from the game board, you are then going to place any colored tiles into their colored spots on your storage space on your card. Any love tiles or monster tiles will go back in the bag. When you're playing with tough monsters, there's a rule in which you can get rid of monsters as long as you get rid of the monsters uh, that uh, correspond with, another, uh, that attach with three other love tokens. So when I choose the square area here, I can get rid of one, two, three love tokens and the fourth one being the monster and the monster will leave play. Monsters are important to get rid of because otherwise it's gonna be very difficult to win the game with these guys here. But those are the main different types of abilities that you're gonna be using in the game. Your card ability, playing these cards and following the specific sequence or the specific pattern and removing the specific types of colors. And remember, they all have to be the exact same color. And then, um, of course, if, after you do all those abilities, you'll be able to draw a card. You'll draw a card from the tiny robot deck. This guy here, you flip it over and it's gonna have a specific pattern just like you would normally have seen, which can be rotated and you'll place it with you. If you can't play a card, that's okay. You can store them for later and you can have multiple cards in your hand to be used on your next turn. In which case, you just keep those cards and feed the monsters. Feeding the monsters is pretty simple. When you're playing with, I don't know, look at uh, hungry monsters. 
Whenever a monster is on the board, if that monster's color is, I don't know, we have a green and we have an orange one here. And let's say that there was orange and green uh, tiles on the board. You would have to remove one of each of these tile or one of each of these uh, uh, colors from the player's boards and put them back in the bag. So you'll lose progress when monsters on the field and are not removed from the game. So hungry monsters can be pretty dangerous, I suppose. Uh, after that, you'll move on to refilling the board. Anything that was not on the board or that had been removed from the board, you will place back on the board from the bag. Then the next player will take their turn. They will then do the things. They will switch or swap tiles. They could use their ability. They could go ahead and play their cards to remove these off of the board. And then, of course, they will uh, draw a card, feed the monsters, and refill the board. And it'll just keep going on like that, up until eventually this deck is going to run out. When this deck runs out, players will keep playing until they have um, basically none of these cards left to use. Um, and then if you can't completely finish it, I suppose you just lose the game. It's a pretty simple, pretty straightforward style, puzzling, cooperative game. So Tiny Robot Love Doctors is a puzzle cooperative game. Uh, this one is on the harder difficulty for scale, I would say, because you're going to lose the game when you can no longer draw cards from this deck. When it empties, you'll have another round, and if you can't do so, you're out. And it's almost formulaic to the point where you almost need to use all of the cards in order to successfully get all of these love tiles on the board. Love tiles are wild, which means that you can use them to remove them off of the board in addition to the other like sad emotions. And those will go back onto the field, but these will go back into the bag. But they'll need to come back out on the board by the end of the game because you need your entire board filled with these little love tokens. If you don't have that by the end of the game, you are going to lose the game. So it's very, very important you do so. Now, I believe if you can fill the board with love tiles before the bag empties, uh, which is going to be very, very challenging, but I think you would just still win anyway. Mm -hmm. And that presents with the different types of variations in the game. Tough monsters. Um, I believe is the starter variant, but then you have hungry monsters where you have to feed them in certain ways and hostile monsters. And then you're gonna have the different sprite tokens that you can use as well as another variation for the game. Uh, this is a challenging cooperative game in the sense that when you play, you're probably going to lose your first game, but you are going to learn and you're going to get better. You're gonna start realizing that you don't wanna actually leave these on the board. You wanna utilize them because these are going to get you where you need to be when it comes to removing monsters and when it comes to removing other emotions. Uh, don't just try and create the board around the love tiles to leave them on there. You're going to need to utilize them to get rid of as many possible tiles as you can. Now, of course, the best plays in the game are playing cards that are going to get rid of all of a specific color or basically getting rid of a monster. Now, obviously, I would say best play would be if you have a square card and then you have the monster with three love tiles in a square position to get rid of these monsters, to get, just get them gone because they are annoying, they come back, they are hard to deal with, and they require a lot of like manipulation on the board. So if you can get lucky by just having that board state as it is or just swapping, swapping once or however you can do it, do so. You don't want to put things back in the bag that are not good for you. Only good stuff needs to go back in the bag. Now, another thing too is player abilities. These are all really unique player abilities and they all come in handy sometimes. So sometimes really useful, sometimes you're not gonna use them as much. Um, once per turn, you may swap a card in your hand for one card in another player's hand. That's actually really useful. And you can say, I need that specific pattern and you can use this one and we can work together on this board. There's a lot of thought processes as to what you wanna do on other players' turns, like how you're gonna try and make it all work. And because you're cooperating, you're kind of teaching each other as you go along. And what's also cool is you get special swaps too. For instance, this guy says that instead of a standard swap, I can swap a tile in my storage with a non-love tile on the board. So if I had, oh, I don't know, a random tile on my board here that I had previously removed, like this red one here, uh, I could swap it out with um, maybe this blue one here. And then I would be able to basically remove tiles from the board in a different type of pattern. Uh, maybe it would make it easier for me. Some of them involve swapping around love tiles. Uh, some of them involve swapping tiles from different edges of the board, as long as it's very specific types of tiles. Regardless, though, they're very useful, and each of them are going to come and play at certain times in the game, and you're going to require a little bit of help throughout this game as well. Sometimes people will see things that you do not see. You, try and want, you want to try and make the best possible plays, whether it be for yourself, or if you can't do it, make sure that it helps your opponent 
opponent, your <laughs> opponents, I'm so used to playing competitive games, <laughs> your, uh, your cooperators or your, your teammates, uh, make sure that helps them in some way. And, and that's going to be the benefit to you. We played this game quite a few times and it took us quite a while to win. It was really, really challenging, but it always came down very, very close, which is why I think it's really important with this type of game. It makes you want to play again after you have tried and failed. And you start to see little things you can do to make it more more likely for you to be able to succeed in the game. You always want to remove as many possible tiles of these specific colors as you can and to remove monsters as soon as they pop out if possible as well. But that changes with the different variations of play when it comes to feeding monsters and whatnot. They start to become a little more challenging as well. This is a fun game. This is a great little puzzler. This is one that makes you think and it's one that you can work together and have a little bit of group think while you're trying to figure out what the heck is going on in the game, what the board state is like and how you can best manipulate it and utilizing your cards to the best of their possible ability and if you can't you have to save them so that you can use them later don't just simply try and remove one piece when you've got three love tiles and one other one it's not worth it you've got to make sure that you make their turns count otherwise this game is going to it's going to punish you <laughs> i was not expecting this game to be as challenging as it was but in my opinion that's a cool thing uh what do i think about the stylization of the game it's cute it's fun the artwork's great this does exactly what i imagine it would do as far as when it popped out i looked at it it looked like a type of a puzzler and it did that and all the, i guess the only thing is was the difficulty it was the only thing that kind of like i was like oh dang it's a little more a little more intense than i thought it was going to be um yeah, I, I like the graphic design. I like pretty much all the stylizations of it. I think it's going to be niche to certain people who will like it or dislike it. I think the quality of the components is cool. Um, I don't know if this might be a prototype. I'm not too certain, but it plays just fine as it is. I, I think it's a prototype. I think it can make some really cool pieces. I'd like to see these little tokens be like, I don't know, poker chip style or something like maybe a little bigger. I, I think that would be kind of cool. Um, player boards can be a little thicker, uh, but otherwise it plays just fine. It's a really cool little game. I think most people who jump into this with their family, friends, co-workers, that kind of thing, are going to dig this game. Is it a super complex style modern game? No, it's it's going to be more of a puzzler. This is going to fit more in the realm of like Sagrada Moonshell, that, that, those those kind of games. Uh, but if you like those style of games, then this was one I would uh, suggest picking up, especially because it's a cooperative game, which makes it a little different than a lot of them. It's not about scoring points. It's about reaching an objective together. This can lead uh, into a little bit of alpha gaming, but if you don't know what that is, probably not going to be a big issue, but some players might know more and be like controlling the game, and maybe you would suggest having each player kind of play their turn individual. Because the game's so damn hard, I wouldn't suggest that. Overall though, Tiny Robot Love Doctors is a lot of fun. I really strongly enjoyed this game, and because most of the people who I was playing with were saying, let's play it again, let's play it again, just because they wanted to win the game so bad, I think that's great design. And because of that, it's getting my seal of approval. It's a solid game. It's enjoyable. This should fund uh, as long as the marketing goes well because this this is a, a, a ton of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Tiny Robot Love Doctors. A uh, very peculiar name, but it works none the same. You can also check out the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our live stream is every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you might see us play this one because it's quick, it's fun, and you can see the challenging difficulty and decide if it's a game that you would like to play as well. And of course, if you would like, you can go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button down below. I greatly appreciate it. You can see more games just like this one. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to creating the tiny robot love formation with you next time.